in three, two, one. All right, I'm here at the Porter's House restaurant, the Drexler chain of restaurants. I had to bring in Leonard Wheeler for the show. We haven't been here for a year, man. We had to come back from last year. Leonard Wheeler, I'm going to tell you how I got to know you. Uh-oh. You were holding me, or saying I was holding you on the yes, kickoff th team. I was on the kickoff correct. return team. Thank you for you the on the kickoff team. Though. I grabbed you, got you. We had a good return. You like, quit holding me. No, quit no, holding no. me. I remember grabbing your hand like, get that hand off me, bro. He's like, come on. Eight-year NFL veteran with drafted by the Bengals. That's yep. where we used to run into each other. Yep. Minnesota Vikings and then That's also right. the Carolina Panthers. Thanks for coming, man. How oh, you been? Man, thanks for having me, man. Come on. I'm chopping it up with Buck. Come on. Are you kidding me? You this, is, <laughs> this is what we do. Yeah, We've been talking about this for a while. That's right. And I'm, I'm glad to finally get you here because I kind of want to talk to you a little bit. Every time I see you, you're going somewhere here, you're going somewhere there. Yep. The Bengals win the Super Bowl. Tell me about that. I know Craig Thompson, your, your guy that was that got drafted with the y'all right. were out there. What was it like to be at the Super Bowl this year in L.A. with the Bengals? You know, it was a great experience, man. First of all, you know, it was uh, it was it was one of those things where you're like, gosh, you know, just the experience itself, yeah. Yeah. right? But the organization. And Eric Ball, who you know, oh yeah, Eric, EB and I Eric played works in with yeah. work, works with the Bengals, and you want to see guys that you know win. Okay, okay. And you know more so than that. I love following the players. Uh -huh. You know, Joe, Joe Cool, oh yeah, Jamar Chase. <laughs> those guys were putting in hey, work. I don't think Sam Hubbard and the guys on defense get enough credit. You call talking all offense. I'm an offensive guy, and I kept You're telling right. people that is why they were going to be right. so good. They had a great defensive line mm -hmm. the DBs the linebackers were balling all year yeah. and you know what they set the stage in the playoff they really did they set the stage in the playoffs and they showed that it wasn't just about the offense it was also about the defense yeah I, I agree with you 100 percent I think the biggest thing this year in football is the playoffs were great playoffs were amazing <laughs> I mean every single yeah. week we were like whoa yeah. I mean you, could, you couldn't stop it but but take me back to you're growing up in Tacoa, Georgia. Yeah. We were talking earlier, and I didn't know. I played with Pat Swillen. Yep. You grew up, in, or cousins with Pat, yep. right? Cousins with yeah. Pat. You know, he set the stage for us as far as what work ethics yeah. supposed to look like. Okay. And you know, Pat was a consummate professional. Okay. He always did the little things right, and yeah. he always went beyond what's normal. Okay. You know, and he set the stage, and he played 13 years in the NFL. Yeah. You know, because of that. As a rookie. I was drafted by the Saints, so I played with oh, sorry, Pat. Yeah, yeah, I played yeah, with, with, with Pat. But I got to know him at Georgia Tech. My yeah. mom lived in Atlanta. I go down there and I train with Jeff Mathis and a bunch of those oh, guys. Oh, you train with Tech. some guys, yeah. yes. And Pat Swillen was would come out, and you knew it was time to work. But to your point, getting getting prepared, getting ready, it showed you early on how to do it. He showed me early on, and he, and he, and you know what we really always do, and I think you would agree with this, Buck. There are people that came before us, yeah, yeah right, yeah. and they gave us a standard, gotcha. and and then we had to then take that standard and then create a little bit more excellence for our generation that's going to come after us as well. Yeah, I, you bring up a great point. Kenny Burrow just passed away. He was a Houston Oil, a double zero who I knew around town. Reggie Moore and I used to work out at a hill, Tom okay. Williams Hill. That's to me where I first learned like, hey, if I'm gonna be a pro, I gotta work like Earl Campbell and those guys. That's right? it, those, those legends before us, man, they yeah. set the stage for us, right? Yeah. They made things a little better for us and so it's our job to make things a little better for the generation that comes after us. Who was the first coach that you had that said, hey, you can play? Man, you know what, Coach Walker, Coach Rodney Walker came my senior year in, co in high school. Okay. He came my senior year, and I'll never forget the first meeting, Buck. Yeah. He came up to me, he said, he slapped me on the chest. Bam! You're my running back. <laughs> right? And I was like, whoa, who is this guy? Yeah. And I, I'll never forget. He used to always tell us in every meeting, there's only one boss on this team. And it's me. <laughs> right? And he set a stage, though, yeah, of respect yeah. to say, hey, I'm going to help you, but I need you to understand that you're going to have to listen to me, but I can help you get there. Okay. And he was also Megatron's high school coach. Oh, wow. So he also coached Calvin Johnson. He coached Calvin Johnson. Wow. It's after me. Sandy Springs. I Sandy Springs. Yep. Yeah, he yeah, became yeah. the head coach of Sandy Springs, and he was Megatron's uh, high school football coach. You know, I had a couple coaches in high school like that that really 
kind of gave me the impetus to say, yeah, Belton Narcisse was one, uh, Gary Nichols, and then we had John Pierce who actually came in my junior year because I didn't play varsity till my junior year. What, you played football? I played football, basketball, and track. Okay. Which one was your favorite? You know, football was my, you know, okay. Track is the only sport mm -hmm. that I can video and, and watch later. Really? It is. Like, I can literally video track at any point and watch it later. So I really did enjoy track. And you know, my daughter ran track she did. as well. Yeah, and yeah. so that was one sport that I really wanted to run in college. Okay, okay. I wanted to yeah. run track while I played football in college. And this is the interesting thing, because I tell young kids this all the time, play multiple sports. You yeah, do that coaches, now. Coaches make it harder, though. They do. For them to cross train, because, because they make a sport all year round now. When I was in high school, Coach Walker told us, you're going you're gonna to either play basketball or you're going to wrestle. Okay. You're okay. going to run track or you're going to play baseball. You're going to do something. Else. You're yeah. going to do yeah. something. You're not going to just go home. Yeah. And the thing that drives me nuts yeah. is when I see our kids not participating, one in general, right, because of what sports offers us yeah. in terms of life lessons. So what does sports offer you as a life lesson oh, going up into core? to Core Georgia, Stevens County High School. What did it offer you? You fall down, get up. Okay. And you fall down, somebody can help you up. Okay. And if you fall down, receive help to get up. Okay. You see? Yeah. So those are three different elements right there yeah, that are yeah, just yeah. life lessons just yeah. in general. To what, you don't have to try to be the Lone Ranger and make it by yourself. Yeah. You have yeah. coaches around you, you have players around you, so don't ever forget that you're not on the field you're not on the field by yourself. Yeah. You're on the field with a team of people. I, 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 it's interesting. I've interviewed a lot of people, and I always want to know what drives and motivates them. Team-oriented guys, mm -hmm. even if they seem, you know, we talk about guys being prim, prima donnas. You play with a lot of guys. I did too. Right. The guys that are considered prima donnas, I didn't do that because I knew they were they were exceptional. Right. Yes. Especially right. Especially if they knew how to make everybody around them better. Make everybody better. When you got to Troy State after your journey through high school and then college, when you knew you were getting drafted, what did it feel like to get that call or get that? You know what, but it was tough for me. Okay. I mean, I mean, really, you know, when I, you know, when Coach Walker came my senior year, he asked me a question. He said, what is it that you want to do, son? I said, I want to play in the NFL one day. I told my mom when I was eight years old that I was going to play in the NFL because she was going through domestic dispute, domestic disputes with my dad. Okay. okay. And so, and I remember telling her I'm going to play fast forward. Coach Walker takes me to Lees McCray. Okay. I play at Lees McCray Junior College for two years because I wasn't highly recruited. Okay. I played there for two years, meet Coach Johnson, who was another mentor of mine, even to this day. Yeah, yeah, My yeah, defensive yeah. back coach that said, son, what do you want to do? I want to play in the NFL, let's go! Right, and he was just one of those fiery coaches who love the Lord right now. And and then fast forward to Troy, I set out I set out of football for two years before Troy. I set out one year at home. Okay. And I remember jogging around my hometown and people looking at me like I'm crazy, like, what's this fool doing? Yeah, yeah. Right? You know how you have a goal in your mind, right, but yep. And no one knows. Yeah. what that goal is but you know that there's something in me that can't give up yeah, yeah, yeah. like I know you've given me something more this can't be it yeah. like this is not the expiration date yeah. right now what kind of work did you do besides working out what did you do for work I mean Man, what did you know what Mr. Worley who thank God for him yeah. he gave all of us a job he was an alumni for Georgia Tech okay. and he gave all of us a job so that we can earn an honest living and he, he, he allowed us to deliver mail throughout Atlanta, Tacoa, Hartwell, Gainesville. And he was giving us this job, man, so that we could earn a living. So it was pretty amazing. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. We're going to take a quick break, chopping it up with Buck. We'll be right back. Back with chopping it up with Buck. I got my man Leonard Wheeler here. We were just really getting into some some really good stuff here, Leonard. And I think the thing is, you were talking about your journey and how you were working and doing, yep. just working for two years. You were out of ball, two years out of ball, and you said you had to find a way to get back. So tell me, okay. what that? I mean, what Buck. was it? Yeah. Okay, Buck. 
So, coming out of junior college, I was highly recruited. Yep. I had to go home, work, help my mom. So I'm working out at home for a whole year. Okay. Working out, doing my thing, I have a job, helping make and some- Miss Winnie, right? Miss Winnie. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't even play around with mom, <laughs> boy. She doesn't play around. So, so and, and, and you're gonna hear how she plays such a significant role. Yeah. But, so I'm at home working, yeah. working out. We don't have a home phone at this point. Okay, we don't have a home phone. Because of all the things that are going yeah, on. Yeah, uh, just a lot going yeah, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have a home phone at this point. Mm. So this guy calls my aunt. He finds a number. He calls my aunt. He said, hey, my name is Max Howell. He finds where I'm working. He calls me, Buck. He goes, I remember you from Florida State. I've been looking for you for a whole year. I'm on my way to Ole Miss. I want you to come to Ole Miss and play football for me. Wow. But I said, Coach, I don't have any money to get there. Yeah. I said, I don't even have a car. My mom gives me her only car buck. To take down. To go back to school. And you have five siblings, right? Yeah, but yeah. do you hear me? I hear you. Like, hey, listen. Sacrifice, man. When I was out of ball for you, I got cut by Cleveland. Went home to Austin. Worked out for a few teams, but I was working out trying to find a way to get back in the league. I was home with mom. That's the last time I've lived with my mother that yes. since time. But she was the one that just kept saying, because initially, because initially I was gonna give up. I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna move on." She said, "No, it's not done. It's not done for you. Come on, it's not done for come you on. yet. Come on, <laughs> it's not done. Bro, for come you. on." So yeah, when I hear that story, it almost—I mean, uh, Bro, come on. Uh, it, it almost makes you want to choke up because you know how Ooh. difficult it is to get yes. there, and you know what what it takes. Those little. I think people see the finished results and they think, oh, it was they easy. They don't see the in-between yeah, work. Yeah. They don't see mom patting you on the back. Yeah. They don't see mom wearing out her knees praying for her boy. That's true. Do you hear me? <laughs> I hear you loud. Come on, man. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. That's good stuff. So get drafted. I mean, you fast forward, you go to Ole Miss. Go to yeah. Ole Miss. Yeah. They end up coming to me and saying, hey, Leonard, I'm getting ready to, I'm literally in my dorm. Coach Henry, the defensive, um, the defense coordinator is in my, in my dorm. And he goes, he has tears in his eyes. And he's like, son, we didn't give you the right instructions. We needed you to take one more English class. And we didn't give you the right instructions and you're gonna be ineligible for the year. This would have been two years. I was so ups I was distraught. Yeah, yeah. I, but I was distraught. So what I said was, I decided at this point, I said, if I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna fail making my own decisions. Mm. Do you hear me? Yeah. The same guy that brought me to Ole Miss calls me. He said, hey, I was offered a position at Troy. Wow. Do you want to go? And, and, and let's take people through this. This is before transfer portal. This is before all, all that stuff. Yeah. This is, Recruiting was totally different then. This is before all that. We didn't have Uber. Like, I had to, <laughs> we didn't have ways to make money. Like, I mean, yeah. we were struggling. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so he said, you want to go to Troy? I go to Troy. I literally pack up my stuff. I tell my guys that I had met, was, hey man, I'll see you in the league. Oh, wow. I said, I'll see you in the league. At that point in my head, it was only the Father in heaven could stop me yeah, yeah. from getting there. Yeah. Seriously. No. Check it out. I get to Troy. Yeah. They were in transition from Division II to Division I AA, so they had the same rules. Oh, wow. So I get there and I have to set out a year. Okay. So that's two years now. But. What was the, the silver lining in sitting out that year? It had to be something good because if you're out of ball, and I know you probably wanted to play right away, but being out another year, what did that do for you? Think Les back Brown, to that time. Les Brown says it best. You got to stay hungry. And I remember listening to Les Brown say, you got to stay hungry. So you were a Les Brown tape guy, and too. I, I had all the tape. Like, I was hungry. Well, I, I was hungry for a state. Miss Mamie Brown's son. Miss Mamie Brown. Well, Miss Winnie. Miss Winnie. <laughs> Miss Winnie Mayfield's baby boy. And so, and I remember getting up at 2, 3 in the morning, going to work out on the field by myself during training camp. Yeah, yeah. My roommates would wake up and I would be over there doing push-ups, yeah. abs. Yeah. I was hungry. It had to be. But I was hungry. Put in one year work. Now, let me let me just say this though. Okay. 
I thank God for people like Mark Fleetwood, who was my defensive back coach, who kicked in the NFL. Okay. Larry Blakeney, who was my head coach from Auburn, came from Auburn my senior year. Think about it. All this is happening my senior year. Yeah, yeah. Coach Walker my senior year. Coach Fleetwood, Larry Blakeney my senior year. Because you really only have one year. Are you? One year. But I, but I do think Coach Maddox, who accepted me okay. to come there before Larry Blakeney got there, and he said, I want to give you a chance. I said, I called Coach Maddox, hey, Coach, Leonard Wheeler from Old Miss. Yeah. I want to come there and play football. We don't have any scholarships. I don't need one. I'll earn one. Game on. I'm hungry. <laughs> Let's go, bro. You off. So what did it feel like through all those trials and tribulations to get that call? It was, man, yeah, where, it were, was. where were you? I was in my dorm room okay. on campus. First of all, I played in the All-Star, Blue-Gray All-Star game. Okay. I played in the Senior Bowl. Yeah. I went to the combine and I pulled a hamstring oh, on my 40-yard dash. Oh, man. So I didn't get to do any drills. From a, from a, what you consider the smaller school. Small school. You play one year. Yeah. You don't do any drills at the combine. Yeah. But I'm still hungry. And now this is before they did all the team, you know, school yeah, running yeah, yeah, with yeah. 20 people coming. Yeah, yeah. I had to run 20 times for 20 teams. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ron Meeks, man, came. And he almost killed me. Oh, yeah. Didn't work out. Like, he worked me out <laughs> as if that, that was the last workout of my life. And and then, then Coach Shula for drafting me. Okay. And the Brown family yeah. for drafting me. So, I, now, let me, let me ask you this, too. A lot of people have complained about the Bengals organization. And they and it, and it has notoriously they wouldn't give you what we heard on the outside. Right. Didn't give you a jock strap. Didn't give you but one pair of everything. I was there for five years, bro. Yeah, so <laughs> hey, fuck! I was there for five years. I'm not saying anything. I plead the fifth. No. Ah, ah. But I, right, know, I know from too many guys <laughs> that that went on. Yeah. But. I still see Anthony Munoz loves the organization. Yeah, no I still see Boomer, That's right. you and CT, Craig Thompson. Right. A lot of you guys, Eric Ball, who's been there for a long time. Yeah. What is it about the Cincinnati organization or the people, the, the fans? Yeah. Just the brotherhood. Yeah. Bro, you know it's the locker room. Yeah. You know it's the brotherhood. It's the legends. It's the brotherhood that fights in the gap for you, that yeah. fills up your cup. That when you are empty, man, they fill the cup up, right? Yeah. And then the game itself, the NFL and what it offers, the rich history of the game, the people that lay down their lives before us, man, yeah. that, that did a strike for us yeah. to receive higher benefits yeah. Yeah. and more wages. Yeah. You know, people that fought for us, yeah. you know, and it's easy for us to complain about the little things, yeah. but I think when all of that's washed away, you start to understand how grateful you need to be yeah. for the opportunity that God has given you. And that is what we focus on more than anything else. I, I'm interested to hear your story about post-football more than anything because you said something that, that struck a nerve with me. And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't stop reading and I couldn't stop going to it. You said you were in a black hole yes. when you left the game. Because it's hard to describe. It's hard to yeah. describe. I, I'll tell you something real quick that made me go back to I knew I was done playing when I worked out for the Carolina Panthers. Yeah. I was on a bus with Andre Reed, who was going to go on to play probably five, six more years. But Andre and I played against each other. And, and uh, when he was at Buffalo, I was at Indy. Okay. I have a box of Bojangles chicken. First time I had Bojangles <laughs> after that workout. It was the chicken too good, Bob? No, I just knew I wasn't going to play ever again. <laughs> Really? I knew at that Why? moment, at that moment, I was done. Because you had the chicken, and normally you wouldn't do that. No, it had nothing to do with the chicken. What was it? The chicken just stood out because I knew at that point my body couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't run down the field. I couldn't do anything. It, it was. It was. I, I ate that food, and I said, I'm done. I'm never going to play again. So fast forward, wow. a year and a half later, I lay on my bathroom, my office floor, considering what should I do? Should I go get that gun that I have and shoot myself and end it for my Come family? On, or should I keep going? Come on. Now, that's in 96, that's 97. Real it's real. It's real. That's a real moment right there. Something pulled me away from that. I had the guys in the NFLPA. It, it wasn't like it is now. Yeah. So when you talk about your black hole, 
career-ending injury in 99. Talk, talk to me about that. Yeah, you know, it was, you know, just like, first of all, I commend you for being able to share that testimony. Yeah. Because that's not easy either. People might hear it yeah. and think it's easy to flow out of your mouth, but I know it's not. I didn't go get the gun, but it was in my head. It was it. in my head. I get it. I, get I was it. in pain, oh, yeah. whatever pain that was. And, and I've, I've talked it out with, with counselors. I've done that, but it was, it was a severe thing of, I don't, that's the only thing I've ever known. And I, I, I did, did internships. I was broadcast. I, my life on the yes. outside looked good. Yes. But it was something, it was a hole, it was a void. That's and you it. talked about the black hole. And, and you know, you said everything on the outside looked good. Yeah. We have a tendency to make everything on the outside look good. We're good at it. Yeah. We're actors. We can fake the funk. We're yeah. actors without, <laughs> without being a part of the guild, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and what, what was so amazing about the black hole for me, man, I remember having a moment. I had just called New England. And I called Brad and I said, Brad, hey, I'm thinking about coming out of retirement. Brad Sealy. Brad Sealy. What's up, Slick? What's up? What's up, Sealy? <laughs> What's up, Slick? And I said, I'm thinking about coming out of retirement. Brad was my uh, special teams coach. Mine and you know, so I know Brad Yep, well. so you know Brad well. Yeah. And great guy. Oh, yeah. And he said, I don't know, Leonard. And and I remember my daughter. Yeah. She was a little bitty kid then. She's yeah. probably three. Yeah. I don't want you to play football, Daddy. I was like, shut up, kid. You don't know. <laughs> yeah. You're only three. But anyway, I didn't say that. No, I know what you but, yeah. but it said a lot to me that she enjoyed Daddy being home. But it also spoke something to me that, man, you're lost right now. Yeah. Like, that was a moment where I was like, whoa, hold yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I heard about guys wanting to come back and play. Yeah, yeah. But I never really thought that would be me. Yeah. You thought you'd be the one that you leave and started I mean, a business when you were in. Right. Yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, and I had started a business, Bob. I didn't know what it was, but I knew I did a lot of networking, you know, and people used to call me Jamaican because they said I have a lot of jobs. You and me both. Right? They were like, dude, you have, you're in a lot of meetings. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm real busy right now. I wasn't making any money. But you, you, was, but you were laying the foundation. But I was having an idea of, I know there's more. So I went back, got a degree. I went and got certified and all this stuff. But that was a hole, man. Like, a black hole is a place that you can't describe. You don't know how deep it is. You don't know how wide it is. You just know that it's dark. And even when you try to see the light, it's like somebody closes the lens. And you're stuck, and you're stuck in this place of transition. And you're like, Lord, you're going to have to help me get out of this place because I don't know where I'm going. Like, I know I have an idea of where I want to go. Yeah. I have no idea how to get there. Well, and a lot of guys talk about it being, depre being depressed. Oh, oh, it was depressed. Yeah. Listen, not first, to get of all, out of bed, just, first of all, yeah, the at malaise. the time, you didn't want to call it depression. I, I agree. I agree. It was depression. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. depression. <laughs> it's great. No, I, 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 yeah. I hear you loud and clear. Yeah, it was yeah. It was 100% yeah. depression. Yeah. And at that moment, I didn't want to call it that because we think it's a weak place to be like man no I no, I wasn't depressed you know I was a little you know just under the weather when I was able to say that I'm a coach that I am a personal executive coach went away but uh, yeah went away brother got up and started walking like <laughs> Let's go! I'm hungry! Yeah, Come on! Yeah. And man, that was an epiphany for me. Yeah. But it was tough. Yeah. Tough yeah. transition, bro. Well, we're going to take a short break. We're at the Porter's House, a Drexler family of restaurant, hospitality roots, roots hospitality restaurant with John and Kim Drexler, who have been kind enough to let us hang out here. It's been good with Leonard. We'll be right back after this message. I'm back with Leonard Wheeler here at the Porter's House. 
You gotta come check it out. We haven't even eaten yet, but when we do that, mm, I'm ready. Mm, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. So, Linda, you were talking about the transition coach. Y'all might see Terry. She's a big New England fan or a Tom Brady fan. <laughs> I'll say that from Connecticut. She's, she's helping us out, always taking good care of us. Her husband loves Tom Brady as much as yeah. you love Tom Brady. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now we've got to open the spectrum a little bit now. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, you got to find you got to find somebody else to love. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Thanks, Harry. Uh, but you talked about the transition coach. I think when I came here, you and I met, and I got a chance. I was here in 05, and I, I started working with the guys here in the NFL, retired players. And I, you, we had the same thing in Indy, but it was starting to grow and become stronger. You talked about doing things with those young men as they leave. And I've told you for years, if you ever need me, let me know, because I, I know how difficult that is. But with that said, what was that like, and what did that do for you to help you with your transition? Well, I think, I think it all started, you know, I started the NFL chapter here for the PA, when I was doing a lot of work for the PA at that time. I was on the board of directors for the PA. Started the NFL chapter here okay. over 15 years ago. And when I started working with the NFL, I remember Troy Vincent, uh, Tracy Perlman, yeah. pulled us into the NFL office, and we didn't know what it was. Yeah. Like, you know, we didn't know. Like, we were like, okay, we're here, what are we doing? Yeah. You know, and it was a clean slate, okay. right? But one of the things that we said, is that we will serve our men and their families. And that was our commitment yeah. to that point. It wasn't about how many benefits can we give them first. Yeah. It was like, how do we serve them? Well, and you bring up a good point because I had contention with the league for a while. Yeah, that's And right. I wasn't even an old guy, but the old guys, I saw what they went through. My right. biggest thing was they would always talk about, hey, these great things that we have right. and nothing ever came out of it. But I will say, it has gotten better. I'm actually getting my MBA because of the league. Come on, let's go. Yeah, I mean, there's still some things I don't like. Right. But, I, I, but I'll say this. What I've noticed is having you guys around has pushed them more to do things when guys are in need. And I've right. seen that help guys that need uh, attention in certain things. Right. Now that they know that's there. So I'm, I'm curious, how do we keep getting that word out? Because there's still some guys that are bitter. They right. walk away from the game. They don't. They don't want to watch the game. Yeah. But and you've seen that. So from a transition coach, That's how right. do you help guys with that? You know what? You know what, man. First, it's, it is called acceptance yes. and grace. Yep. You know, we have to make sure that we understand the why behind bitterness. Yeah. You know, bitterness has a why behind it. Yeah. You know, who wants to be kicked out and said you can't play anymore? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's disappointing. It's who wants to be turned away? Who wants to face their family and say I don't have a job? Yeah. What man? Yeah. Like I, I don't know, I don't know any, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, who wants to not be able to call their own ticket in terms of when do I get to transition? And in a league of 70, 75 percent of guys that look like us that come from sometimes social not yeah. economic backgrounds that aren't. Yeah. Well, you're going to walk away with a, you a, a trust like fund. You feel like you failed in some capacity. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have, you know, so one thing that I come from is a place of emotional okay. intelligence in terms of, dang, Terry, she's not playing around. Thank you. And I got you some of the carpaccio. Okay. That way there you can. Oh, perfect. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So we have a plate of food right here in front of us. Yeah. I'm going to probably have to dig in. We're going to dig in. But, yeah. but, but, you know, and so really coming from that place of grace and then understanding that, you know what, let me hear your story and not judge you. You know, because when you, if, if I judge you, now I'm shutting you off. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not allowing you to tell your story. Uh, that's, well, so we have to tell the folks at home. Porter's house has been kind enough to give us some beignets. And you got some uh, really good, what is it, kapashi? I may yeah, butcher it. There's a lot of stuff going on in here. I don't know. I'm going to have to work hey, through it. It looks good. So we're going we're gonna to talk and eat, if you guys don't mind. Um, but the big thing, Leonard, is you, you wrote a book in 2015. You know, uh, you finally gave me a copy after all those years of not, you know, telling me I, I held you. So I'm, I'm going to show you a book, you Beyond the Locker Room. I, I wanted you to earn that book. By Leonard Will. You had to earn it. Your journey, your path. So you do a lot of motivational speaking. Yeah. You do a lot of things, life coaching, business coaching. I think that's really critical uh, as you transition because you're helping others, serving others. Tell us a little bit about the book 
and your 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 new endeavors, your motivational speaking, all of those things. Talk to me about it. First of all, the book was 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 really birthed through a lot of disappointment. Okay. You know, I was going through, um, you know, probably close to going through a, a divorce. Okay. Okay. Um, which is difficult. I think for most people, but it was just. It was devastating for me. Um, it was tough, and because it's not just for that's devastating for you. It's devastating for everybody. Yeah, all all the families and like everything. Yeah, you know, yeah. daughter. It touches everybody. Yeah. And when I wrote the book, I reached out to people that I trusted in terms of, um, you know, I wanted them to tell to share their story too, right? Like Troy Vincent, he's in yeah, the book. Yeah. Um, Tracy Perlman, okay. she's in the book. Dale Davis, who I grew up with, you have played in the NBA. Played in the NBA for 16 years. Okay. He's in the book. Um, and you know, and so going through that transition, it allowed me to put things on paper okay. that normally I wouldn't have put on paper. Yeah. But yeah. telling my story when I was growing up, but then helping people transition. Okay. It helps people transition from any job. Well, and what it says is. You also know, they say everybody has one or two books on them, right? right. So you've written one, you, you probably got a couple others going. But I think it's critical when you put it down because it's there forever and you can go back to it. Well, I also yeah. have another one, but okay, okay. I have another one, but you got another one. I, 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 I have another one, but, right. but, but, hey, but, but this you know is, what? Let me tell you the, the name of my speech when I used to go out to kids, yeah. I had the four D's. Dedication, discipline, desire, and determination. And don't do the fifth, drugs. God is my witness. See, no, that was my, that, that was my speech. See, you can't even <laughs> see you can't even make this up. This is predestined. This is predestined before we sat down. It was already we was it was it's We've been setup. talking about it for years. It's Ever since setup. you tried to run by me and I held you and okay. block you up real good. Okay. Hey, we're gonna take a short break. Yeah, <laughs> you better take a break on that. We're gonna bless this food. And I'm gonna tell the truth, he did not run by me. I, and that's why Brad Seeley loves me to this day. We're at the Porter's house enjoying some of this great food. I'm with Leonard Will and we'll be right back. <laughs> I was getting ready to tell a real story on that. So we're back, we're chopping it up with Buck. We got some food. We'll talk a little bit. We won't talk too much with our mouths full of food. We won't bite on this a little bit. Glad to have my man Leonard Will. We, I tease him all the time, but love him like like a brother from glad another mother. Here, bro. We've Thank you. talked about this for years. And I, I'm glad we're able to do it post COVID. Yeah, this is how we started. We started this thing by just t calling my friends and say, hey, can you come on with me? We would Zoom it and I heard some great stories. But I think the thing is, what I love is it gives you a chance to open up, chat. That's Sometimes right. we may have a, a, right. an adult beverage, we might have a cigar or just have some good That's food because right. that kind of brings everybody together. You talked about service. And I love love watching you and your daughter on Instagram when you beat her because she's a track star now. She, she gets mad at you. She is a she's a competitor. <laughs> and then your wife Kim now, yeah. her service working in the healthcare field, which I've done for twenty plus years, right. maybe more than that. Talk to me about both of them and what they mean to you, along with your mom and your dad and all your family. You know what? I mean, man, it is really about uh, having a heart of service and understanding that service first starts at home. It doesn't start outside the house first. And understanding how to serve the people that you love. Uh, Lindsay and I, we've always had that. We've always had that special bond. Uh, we've always been competitive. You know, I've always been a coach to her. But I've also always been dad. You know, and at the same time, she's been. I could not have asked for a better daughter. I mean, seriously. From the moment I met her, her 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 disposition is great. She just. Yeah. But I love her competitive fire. And I can see that. She's a competitor now. Oh, man. <laughs> she's a competitor. She's a global socialist. So she has like almost 900,000 followers on TikTok. What? No, seriously. She's a global social influencer. No, no, she's a. But she can't beat you in the cone drill. Okay. <laughs> she cannot. And I own that cone drill. But I can stop you on the kickoff team or the kickoff return to punt team. Stop you. him from coming down. This dude can run now. Big me. You know, he's coming down. I got, and he's the L4 or the 5 because Brad used to like putting I'm those fast I'm going to tell people right the real there, story. I could hold him up. Hey, Quit holding me. But tell them what happened when you caught the ball 
and you got chopped down yeah, like yeah, Paul Bunyan. Yeah. Look, the first thing he did, what you did to me, was it came low. Real low. And I said, no, dude, get okay. your, come up higher, first man. All, Hit me up here. First of all, knee's already bad. First of all, here he is, <laughs> about 250 pounds, 60 pounds, coming at me with them big oversized shoulder pads. <laughs> I'm looking at it. I'm going, oh, I'm getting ready to take you It was out. so funny because <laughs> okay. you didn't even hesitate. Like some guys would act like they're going to go high. Leonard, you went like this. But I remember what you said after I hit you. What did you say? You looked at me and you said, why didn't you hit me up high? I said, I didn't have to. <laughs> like, literally, I remember like it was yesterday. Like it was yesterday. That's why every time I could find 27, right? 37. 37. Yeah. I'm always looking for you. Looking, on, you looking. And I'm going to try, because Brad didn't like to do the cross ones. He didn't like to do where, the Where we could catch you guys slipping and ear hole you. I had, to, I had to get you right. But, I, but hey, Buck, I have to say this. Probably, so Kim and I work out together a lot. Okay. I do a live Saturday morning workout every yeah, Saturday yeah, morning at yeah. 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Okay. She's right there with me doing the workout. She is a competitor. Okay. She wants to beat me at anything. At everything she can. No, everything. <laughs> but the thing is, though, she can't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm bringing heat. Game on. Yeah. Well, man, tell me a little bit more about what you, what, what is the next chapter? I mean, you know, books, you got motivational speaking, your, your company is doing what it's We doing. have a book that we're writing right now. Okay. Um, and we have two books that we're writing right now, actually. Okay. Um, and, you know, those should be coming out over the next months. Okay. Um, my clients are amazing. Sonic Automotive, Capital One. Uh, I work with Martin Walsh at Sonic Automotive and his and his entire leadership team. They are absolutely amazing. When I wake up in the morning, I'm blessed. When I go and I'm doing things for the legends, like I'm going to the Combine okay. this year, yeah, yeah. and I'm going to mentor the defensive backs there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tracy Perlman, Troy Vincent, they're doing such an amazing job. I wish people could just see the work that they're doing, man. Yeah, yeah. They are setting the stage for us to be better, Buck. So what we need to do is we're going to do another chopping it up section okay. at the Combine. I just, you just gave me a great thought. I, I played in Indy for years. Okay. It's going to move, I know that. Okay. But I love to be able to spend time with you and Troy and Tracy and then sit up and just yeah. talk about some of the things, not only that you're doing for the players coming in the league, because yeah. it's a lot about what those guys after, yes. the struggles that they've had, and just right. really spending some time talking through that and what the next chapter looks like. I, I think that, yeah, I, I think that's I great. am excited yeah. about what God is doing in my life. Yeah. I am blessed beyond. I have good friends like you yeah. that's asking me to be a part of this so that I can share my story. Yeah. So I want you to know how much we appreciate you okay. for giving us a platform because we understand that that takes work on your behalf and your behalf over there, young fella. Uh, so we appreciate both of you guys stepping in yeah. and really giving us a voice. I'm not talking to you anymore, Terry. <laughs> I thought we were friends. Now, hey, look, now we got the quarter. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. <laughs> hey, all that talking you were doing earlier. I'm not. Look. I'm speechless. Man, I mean, this is chopping it up right here. No doubt. No doubt. This is chopping it up. Hey, this is this is uh, this is special, bro. We got some mashed potatoes, porterhouse. A 36 ounce collard greens. We have some green. You know, hey. I'm from Georgia. You know, I love green. I love green too. I'm I love Texas. green. Yeah. I'm from Georgia. I think greens were in Georgia before Texas. I don't know. I think they were in Texas before Georgia. <laughs> hey, and by the way, John and Kim Dressler, thank you for letting us hang out oh, in the Porter's so. House. The Dressler restaurant chain, outstanding. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We got our food. I'm thinking about doing the two minute drill. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it, so we'll check that out. Right back, chopping it up with Buck. We're back with chopping it up with Buck at the Porter's house. My man, Leonard. Hey, Even though I'm he said, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm throwing the flag before the two minute drill even starts. No, I'm throwing no, the flag. No, no. I'm throwing the flag you, right you gotta now. You got to do it. You got to do it. All right. It's going to be easy. All right. 
I mean, well, it, it may be easy. All right. What was your pregame ritual before every game? Let's go! Come on! I would always go into a state of yeah. come on. And another thing I had to do, I had to pee a lot. <laughs> 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 you so much. Dude! Whatever. Man, you're like, you're yeah. fired up and then you have to go to the bathroom. Come on. <laughs> What's your favorite movie for? One of my favorite movies was one of my first movies was Shawshank Redemption. Ah, good movie. Good that movie. was one of my favorite yeah. movies. That was one of my favorite movies. So I have to probably kind of lean on that a little bit, but I do love the movie Life, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're right, Ray. You're right. You're right. Be up for me. Eddie Murphy and Martin oh, Lawrence. Come I love on. It. Okay. Who was the hardest guy to defend, either on your team or the opposite team when you played? I did have to practice against Chris Carter. Okay. With the Vikings. So Chris was a beast now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say probably Shannon Sharp. Okay. Because Shannon was so dang strong. He was. But Andre Rosen was hard to guard yeah. when he was he was had a lot of wiggle. Kind of like Steve Smith yeah. back in his you know, yeah. in the in his early days. He was stronger than I think people gave him credit for. Oh, he was a great receiver. Yeah. But Anthony Miller was probably the fastest. Now Carl Pickens, you played against Carl every oh, day. Yeah. What made him so special? You know what made Carl so special is because he believed that he was special. I got you. Seriously. Yeah. His confidence, people might call it arrogance or yeah. overcome. Well, I don't care. And, and he, would get he needed a lot it. Of he was getting a lot. He was scrappy. <laughs> he would fight. He wasn't just a typical receiver to lay down and and just take it. He was strong and he was a he was a consummate professional. Um. If you're a superhero or a super villain, I'm a superhero and I'm Superman. <laughs> Let's Superman. go, Superman! It's okay. it's like Superman can do everything. <laughs> People want to transport, but let me just fly there. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm stronger than anything. I can beam through anything. I'm Superman. Okay, Superman, that's a good one. Who was a, who was a, your idol growing up? Who was the guy that you said, man, I want to be like? Tony Dorsett. Dorsett. Tony Dorsett. TD. Man, I was Tony Dorsett. Man, that's Tony Dorsett. Tony Dorsett had the style. That was Tony Dorsett. Because you, you were more of a running back in school. I was more of a running back, but it was Tony Dorsett. Yeah. Tony Dorsett had the smooth hair. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you who I was. I was Earl Campbell. Oh, see, that makes Dick sense. Earl. You know what? But Dick that makes Bruiser. sense. Because you're always trying to bruise people. Yeah. <laughs> That's to, because. Why are you trying to run over people? I'm, you want me to be finesse? You want me to be but, like, yeah, I can make people miss. But, but Tony Dorsett made people miss and he ran over people. Yeah, yeah a little bit. Okay. All right. All right. But Earl Campbell was a beast, though. Earl Campbell. Oh, Earl was oh, a beast. Oh, man. Jack Tatum. Remember that time Jack Tatum hit him so hard? Earl didn't fall. But let me tell you, though. <laughs> Remember that I don't want to come back up in here like no, that. No, but he, but he kept running. Maybe not that day. <laughs> Earl Campbell was a beast. Though. What? What's the best thing you've done ever? Just the, the thing that you think about and you're like, oh man, I love this. I could do this again and again and again. I think the most, the best decision I've ever made is to give my life to the Lord. Okay. I really have to say that was the best decision I've ever made because I've never had one regret about it, like ever in my life. And it's one thing that if you want to pass on to anyone or to your kids or to your friends, it's one gift that is a gift that they can live with forever. And it keeps giving. It keeps, keeps giving. Yeah, it keeps giving. So that's the one thing that I just... See, see, you thought it was going to be more difficult. That was great. So I'll let you in on I a good highlight. You. Yeah. I appreciate you, Thanks bro. for coming, man. Thank we got, we're going to do man. this again. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you, we're going to do it again. So thanks for having Leonard Wheeler and chopping it up with Buck. We have been at the Porter's House restaurant. Great. They're serving us food. We got all the stuff coming. That's right. So thank you, guys. If you are in the Waverly shopping area, you got to make sure you come out for a great meal. Chopping it up with Buck. <laughs> Let's go chopping it up with my man, Buck. <laughs> Let's go.